I've never had the clap. Yeah, that's that's what I tell a lot of people too. Anyway, welcome to the Iconoblast podcast. This is the show that takes a look behind the public facades of famous icons to show you why you can never take anything at face value. My name is Cooper, and with me as always is the one and only Joel Benner. Captain Commander. Oh, Joel Benner, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah close enough. That Captain Commander is what I call you in the bedroom. Iconoblast! We put the past on blast! Hit him with the truth, with things you never knew! Nobody is safe, no thing to place! Got Joel and Cooper! I am a power bottom. <laughs> I am still so unclear about what that means. I think I'm that everybody's unclear. But, well, yeah, but that could that could take so many different forms. From my experience, yeah, at least. it's it's ominous. It's you a, know, it's, it's a very mischievous, very nebulous term. Nebulous. Ooh, I like that. That's hot. Mm, nothing quite like a nice nebulous power bottom. Yeah, spread that'll make that nebulous. Bitch. That, that'll make you popular on Grinder. Jesus. Cuss in the first minute. Now we're not we're demonetized. Wait, did we? I said bitch. Wait, I don't think that counts, does it? I don't know. Female dog. Yeah, whatever. Who knows nowadays? Nowadays, like saying anything is is naughty. They're always moving Ooh, the damn goalposts. Jim Beam? Okay. I'll drink this. Ooh, Jim Beam. Cheers. Yeah, well, cheers. I'm getting tired of doing these episodes without a drink. Hey, what's wrong with you? Ooh, I have a, I'm in a oh, man, business I'm a, environment. I'm a businessman now. I gotta be a professional. Have you heard of a flask? Oh, well, yeah. If I had a flask on me, do you think that I would say that on the show? No, it, would, de- it would defeat the purpose of having a flask. <laughs> No, I'm sitting here with my Polar Pop from Circle K drinking iced tea. Oh, that's cute. And it sucks. I don't recommend it. I got a little bit, I got a little confession to make. Oh, God damn it. What? I already confessed to my wife, so I feel like it's okay to talk about publicly. I haven't slept. Ever? I fell asleep on the couch for maybe 30 minutes, for an hour or something. I ended up going out last night. I got fucking drunk. Oh, that yeah. First time going out in months. I ended up going to that gay bar you, you like to go to. It's not a gay bar. It's an after hours bar. Gay after, it, oh, literally anything. Thing. Literally anything is a gay bar if you're blowing dudes in the bathroom, Joel. <laughs> no, I went in, same place. With open eyes, and literally everyone that was there, every single dude was flirty and homosexual. But it was fun. That's because it's, it's only the sure. it's only the gay guys that know how to go out and party and not go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. If you want to have fun after hours, you're going to run into some gay guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let me tell you this. They have new fences, new walls, and they have a, a fucking promo code at the gate that you have to pay monthly to go in it's a monthly subscription service now five bucks a month you have to join to go in there and i was like fuck you i'll give you 50 bucks right now just let me in i was like i was i was drunk and i was like pissed about it i'm like i'm not doing that i'll give you 50 what's your venmo i'll give you 50 bucks right now and he was like all right my venmo's this and i was like cool and then i just walked in and never paid him (laughs) And then I ran into somebody that we know, and she gave me a bunch of cocaine. And oh. I got fucked up on a bunch of cocaine, and I was with this dude. His name uh, is Boosh. He's a sweet meme guy. He gets paid to do memes. And I was oh, like, what's up, Boosh? Give I'll give you $1,000 right now if you do memes for Iconoblast. I will send you 1000 bucks if you... And then I'll give you another thousand when we get to 10,000 followers. Uh, And he said, no. What? That was a good deal. I'm not taking your. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I know. He's he's like, dude, you're drunk and on cocaine. So I'm not going to take your money. But I was, I was on one. Let him in on the ground floor and he turns it down. Shit. We were doing him a favor. Yeah. I got home at four and then I called my wife and was like, I went out and I'm on drugs and I did cocaine. Fuck you. You don't care about me. And she was like, Joel, you're fucked up. Go to bed. And I was like, okay. 
And then I just laid in bed, fucked up, and was like, had the worst hangover of my life, and I will probably never do cocaine again. It's not fun. It just makes you an asshole, and you think it's fun, and it's not. Now I. It's like Adderall with without it making you productive. I I believe that it was Bill Cosby that said that. Uh, which I mean, you can't really listen to a whole lot of things that he said anymore. Thanks, cancel culture. No, but I think it was Bill Cosby that said that cocaine is a is a drug that that amplifies your personality. But what if you're an asshole? Well, it makes you a bigger I mean, asshole. Well, then, yeah, then I'm for sure an asshole because <laughs> I mean, I was cool to everybody, and then when I got home, I was just mean to my wife. And I'm sorry. It's okay. If she's I'm... listening, she doesn't even listen to the show because she doesn't like us anymore. So. <laughs> But I'm sorry, baby, if you're listening. I'm sorry I got drunk all night till four in the morning and did a bunch of cocaine. <coughs> hey, man, it, it happens to the best of us. Yeah. Of course, this is all made up. I don't actually do drugs or drink. I'm sober. Well, you're, Joel, do not break character. Kayfabe. <laughs> we're both raging alcoholics. That's just to keep we're me not, out of jail, Coop. That's we're just not. To keep me out of jail. Raging alcoholics and drug addicts. We're not a, a couple of semi-responsible former dirt bags that are just trying to make our way through life. No, we're we're still yeah. full-blown dirt bags. Uh, party every single night. Um, I can't yeah. believe that you're admitting that you're married because I think that lowers the overall sex appeal of the show. But whatever, I'm I'm oh, still yeah. well, no, I'm no. still pretending that I'm a Dude, I'm a Don Juan. I'm married and ready to mingle. Wait, I don't, know how that works, <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's how it that's works. That's probably a saying, right? Married and ready to. Die? Uh, get buried. <laughs> um, I'm married and ready to get buried. Six, <laughs> six feet underground. So my wife can have my insurance policy. So nah, speaking, I, of your, I, speaking of your wife, we're actually doing an episode that you wrote stuff. about. Uh, you wrote about your trip to Prague. Yeah. So this is going to be. I'm sorry a, if it's in the first person and stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't know how, how else to write it. So I, I want you to read it. I just went through and changed the first paragraph so it wasn't in first person because the first paragraph was was an intro. Super first person. <laughs> uh, yeah, super first person. So okay, I changed so you that. Fixed it. So the well, the rest of it I haven't gone through and done a a full blown pass like I do on on some of the other episodes. So this is going to be oh, an okay. interesting ride for all of us. All right, I. I I was excited about this, and I was really excited about castles. Similar, like, I mean, it's actually already written. It's gonna. I'm gonna. I'm repeating myself in the future right now. <laughs> like Samuel Czar, the episode on Samuel Czar, the guy with the baculum. I was at a castle in Macedonia and got excited to write an episode. So this is kind of the same thing, except I don't think. This one is as good, but we'll see what people. Well, think. you can't say that up front. You let people decide that for themselves. So to the yeah. the remaining we'll see, I'm embarrassed about it, but here we go. To the remaining listeners that decided to stick around after that that amazing endorsement from Joel, we're getting into the story of High Castle. So High Castle or Viceroy, I think that's how you say I, I don't know if that's how you say uh, it. Vicher, Vicher Harad. Vicher Harad. Vicher Harad, yeah. It's weird. Well, it's V Y S E H R A D. That does yeah. not spell Vicher Harad. S's are like CHs in in Czech and uh, Ys or E's. I I can't remember. It's like Vicher Harad, something like this. High well, Castle. Regardless of their illiteracy, High Castle is a fucking badass castle in the city of Prague. Joel saw it with his <laughs> own eyes. He walked its pathways and saw its walls and towers, and he could feel his imagination taking over. I think that's something we go through <laughs> on pretty much a daily basis. Sweet medieval Every knights day. in armor walking around and epic battles defending the castle walls against, uh, I guess, whoever the hell they were fighting at the time. And it was at this moment that Joel realized he knew nothing of the castle. So similar to the Samuel Czar episode, his fascination with castles inspired him to find out everything he could about this castle he was standing in. That's fucking true. So can I just call it High Castle so I don't have to yeah. butcher it? Well, you can say Vicher Harad. Well, uh, yeah, if I was capable of saying v that, I would. Vicher Harad. 
My don't wife is going to be mad at you if you don't try to speak her language, Coop. I, I dare say that she's probably mad at me anyway. <laughs> yeah. Vicher Harad, built in the 10th century. High Castle. Sits on the east bank of... The, oh man, there are so many foreign words in this. Vitlava? V-T-L-A-V-A? Yeah, Vitlava, Vit, yeah. That's Vitlava, how you say it. Sits Vitlava, on the, yeah. Sits on the east bank of the Vitlava River, up high on a hill, hence the name High Castle. The shape Woo! of the river sort of wraps around three sides of the castle, causing a natural moat, which is great for defense. It was a very strategic spot for a castle with only one way in or out. Even with the rivers and cliffs surrounding it, they still built massive walls to further protect themselves from enemies. When I walked in there, it was so cool. Like, you don't know you're in the castle because it's on a hill. And as you're walking, it's all these cobblestone little pathways, and it's green, and it looks fresh and new. Like, they, they maintain it super well. And I was walking around, and the whole time I was there, I was like, I just want to go to a castle. And she took me for a walk, but she didn't tell me that I was already in a castle. And, like, I started looking around, and I started seeing these giant walls, and I saw this tower, and I, suddenly I realized I was in a castle. And that was, so it's like, not, it's it was not, so cool. Like, it's not obvious when you're walking up to the castle that you're walking into a castle? How big is this No, thing? like, well... Because everything is, uh, everything in Prague is like castly. All the buildings are old. Everything is old. Like it's, uh, I, over and over again, I could see how annoying I was being because I was like, oh, and I was like taking pictures with my phone and shooting stuff. And my wife has lived there her whole life. So she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like when you're just going, like if you want to go to Starbucks, you walk under a guard tower that is like literally a fucking castle. Like every time I saw one of these things, I'm like, is that a castle? And he's, and she was like, no, that's a church. No, that's just a bridge. No, that's just this. Like everything looks like a fucking castle everywhere. It's so fucking cool. And then, so we had drinks at 10 AM because on the street, you can just order a drink in Prague. Oh, and because that's, that's drink. just what you do. It's at like Vegas. 10 a.m. Yeah, well, in in America, you can't walk around on the street with a with a bottle of whiskey, but in Prague, it's completely legal everywhere. So I'm like, we order these drinks and uh, like a coffee and a cocktail, and we're walking along, and I like as you start walking, the wall like a wall. It, at first, it just looks like a little brick path on the side, like what you would see. Anywhere, like a little cobblestone brick thing that's two feet tall next to you to, like, guide you along your path. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, I was like, wait, Kiveta, where are we? Is that, that's a, that's a castle wall. And she's like, yeah, you're in a castle now. And it was awesome. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, continue. All right, so inside continue. the fortress walls is the Basilica of St. Peter and St. Paul, a neo-Gothic church that is still functional today. It has twin 58 meter ta meters. What? Why are you measuring this in meters? <clears throat> oh, because I'm European now. Oh, okay, that's right. It has twin 58 meter towers that you can see from all over Prague. It's awesome. You can actually see it too. It's actually fucking sweet. Like from her apartment, you can see them. That is pretty awesome. So yeah, actually, something so cool, else that's dude, pretty like cool. Uh, okay, I forgot how to pronounce the name of the castle again. Vit Vitrhrad. Vicher Harad. Vicher Harad. She's going to make fun of me. I'm saying it wrong, too. It's okay. Hi, Castle. Yeah, we're we're both pretty accustomed to being made fun of at this point. That's part of being a public figure. Yeah. So actually, you something can, else you can that's... See the, uh, you can see the... That castle, and... Well, I think I'm about to say it. You can see the other castle, Prague Castle. <clears throat> From Vicher Harad, if you look across the river, you can see Prague Castle. Joel yeah. didn't go there, so he doesn't care about it as much. But here are a couple quick cool facts about it. Like Prague Castle was built in the 9th century and was home for kings of Bohemia and Holy Roman emperors. According to the Guinness Book of Records, Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle in the world. 
It's home to, of the current Czech president, who apparently, according to the locals, is a drunk old piece of shit. So that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually is. I, uh, I, I have an heirloom. And if this was a video episode, I would show it. I'm holding it in my hand right now. The original Bejarovka. It's his favorite drink. Like, uh, It's 38% alcohol. And if you ever look up pictures of him and he has like a cup... Apparently, That's always what he's full, drinking. It's it's literally this is what he drinks, and it's disgusting. It tastes so gross that I love it. There's no way that it can be worse than Malort. Malort is still it's the just worst. Like that Dude, is it? That is the oh god. Why the, would well, they? It, why would they have that in two separate parts of the world, separated by thousands not, and thousands of miles? Who took that to the okay, other side of the fucking ta- world? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't taste like that, but it's it's kind of the same like. When you drink it for the first time, you're 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 surprised in the same way, you know. <laughs> By surprise, do you mean absolutely disgusted? Yes, and then uh, I I kept drinking it. I kept buying these little shooters, like you know, you get the little fireball shots, and you'd sip it on your way home. I was buying those bicharovkas and pissing off Kveta, and, and I was like, oh, this is great. I love this. It's my favorite. And I was just like sipping on it. You made my breath gross. Like she didn't want to kiss me and shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Blame both of those things on the booze. Yeah. I drink the same shit as the president of Czech. We're boys. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously Vacher Harad has been rebuilt and repaired over the hundreds of years. It's been around and there were quite a few battles that took place there as well. One, which, t- <laughs> which tickled my tiny pickle. I'm so glad that I read this episode without reading through it first. <laughs> One which tickled my tiny pickle was in 1420 when the Czechs successfully defended the castle from the evil Roman Empire. That's right, Coop. <laughs> the Czechs whooped the Romans. Joel, you have no idea how much you just pissed me off. <laughs> Do not write that, that type of shit into the notes. You know I have to read whatever you put here. But they did. Well, we don't have to talk about how 200 years later the Romans took it all back during the 30-year war because that's a whole other story. So the Czechs, or a large group of them, at the time known as Hussites, were running around taking back all their little towns and cities in the area that is now known as the Czech Republic. I think back then it was Woo! called Bohemia. Is that that's where that's where Bohemia was? Yeah. yeah I I feel kind of stupid because I feel like I should probably know that considering the fact that I host a history show. But well, regard, I thought Bohemia uh, covered more of Europe. I think it. I think it did, but like. Czech is inside of Bohemia. Okay, so while this little Hussite uprising was happening, the king of Bohemia, who was staying at High Castle at the time, straight up fucking dies. And this is good timing (laughs) for the Hussite. How is that? How is that good timing? Well, I guess I'll find out. Well, because because the the Hussites were uh, a rebellion against that king. Oh, okay. Okay. So the, the yeah, Hussites so they're like were rebelling little, against the king little and rebels then he just and the king dies. was the daddy. So they were getting rebellious against the daddy. And when daddy died, it was good for all the rebels. Yeah, exactly. Well, the king's babe, Queen Sophia, tries to take over leadership temporarily until reinforcements arrive. They, they put a woman in charge. No wonder it's not one of the most powerful countries in the world. But the Hussites are fucking whooping ass. They win battle after battle. They take back multiple towns in Bohemia, slowly pushing back the naughty Roman crusaders. Oh, those naughty boys. <laughs> <laughs> Word finally spreads oh, to Sigismund. You would, never, you would never write that, and you would never say that. I know. <laughs> Can you just say that line one more time? <laughs> Which part? The naughty part. Slowly pushing back the <laughs> naughty Roman crusaders. Word finally spreads to Sigismund, the Holy Roman Emperor, a.k.a. King of Hungary, King of Croatia, King of Germany, and King of Bohemia. Sigismund was the son of the Roman Emperor Charles IV, which is uh, not as cool as his daddy. Sigismund gets his ass whooped a lot, (laughs) including being defeated by the Ottomans in uh, 1396. Well, I mean, everybody kind of got their ass handed to him by the Ottomans at one point or another. Yeah, true. Getting everything for free from his daddy made him not very appreciative of his people, hence causing the Hussite uprising. The Czechs were sick and tired of Sigismund's naughty behavior. Queen Sophia ends up retreating into High Castle as the Hussites basically take back everything else, 
Completely surrounded, the queen declares an allegiance with the Hussite badasses, and they take the castle, just in time for little baby Sigismund to arrive with 20,000 knights. 20,000? 20,000, yeah. That's insane. I mean, a lot of the battles that you that you hear about over the course of history that they're talking about being like large scale battles. They're talking about the amount of people that would attend like, like an indie emo show on a, on a Saturday night. If the band was especially <laughs> popular in, in that particular county. A lot. <clears throat> yeah. 20,000 is dude, a, you a should huge see, like, amount. When, when I was in the castle and looking around, like even now, like with modern like weaponry and shit. Like if you were to attack that castle with, you know, equal military forces, like there's no fucking way. It's like the perfect fucking place. Well, I can, I can think yeah. of one very specific way to, to overcome those defenses. And that's called Naked. air power. <clears throat> yeah. Just, well, if yeah, you didn't have air, drop power. a couple J dams and that motherfucker's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Unless they had anti air. Well, luckily the the Romans and the Hussites didn't have either J dams or anti air. Right. The Hussites were badasses and met Sigismund's army head on just outside the castle walls. The terrain and setup provided them protection and, in a way, funneled the Romans, similar to the three hundred Spartan movie shit. <laughs> you mean the Battle of the Hot Gates, Joel? <laughs> the Hussite Dude, weapon of choice was the. I was expecting you to put spice on this. I was expecting you to. to uh... <laughs> Upgrade the quality. I, I was telling you to. Yeah, I know. I I didn't have time to get around to it because I've got yeah, got like a bunch of other stupid shit that I decided to do. Shit. Yeah, this <laughs> uh, just so everybody knows, Joel is is literally doing everything in his power right now to cover for how busy I've been with other shit that's going on. And if if it weren't for him doing all of the work that he's doing right now, I don't think we would have released episodes for. At, at least like a month or more. You don't have so to say that. anybody who is, I appreciate, I appreciate that. But Coop, we are a team. It's you know the Chris Rock. You've seen the end of the Chris Rock stand up about the tambourine. We're in a band, and sometimes I'm the singer, sometimes you're the singer, and sometimes you play the fucking tambourine. And <laughs> if you have to play the tambourine, nobody wants a shitty grumpy moody tambourine player you play that thing like it's the most important thing you've ever done so we just do our parts and play our roles and we get shit done and we get a show down and drop a show no matter what the cost well i am playing the hell out of this tambourine right now as best as i can (laughs) now your time will come you just wait daddy daddy's gonna go crazy I'm on a cocaine bender right now, so pretty soon you're gonna have to do <laughs> one some uh, some shit, you know. <laughs> one night. So first of all, one night does not make it a cocaine bender. That that makes it a Saturday night, in my opinion. It's two nights. I haven't slept two nights. No, that's just because you're not doing enough cocaine. If you do enough cocaine, then you can sleep through it. <laughs> you'll you'll get there, Joel. You'll get there. I promise. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I I have faith in you. I hope to learn from you, master. <laughs> All right. So the Hussites were badasses and met Sigismund's army head on just outside the castle walls. The terrain and setup provided them protection and in a way funneled the Romans similar to the 300 Spartan movie shit, also known as the Battle of the Hot Gates. The Hussite weapon of choice was the flail and is probably one of the most iconic me- medieval weapons. You know, it's a weapon with the stick and a chain and a on the end and a spike and a ball. Everybody knows what a flail is. It's a ball and chain, Uh, not the wife (laughs) kind of ball and chain, just the normal kind of ball and chain. Uh, So this is when we were talking about this episode, that was one of the things that I wanted to take some time to look into because I have found zero evidence for flails ever being used in combat because they're one of those things like nunchucks. They're, they're equally as dangerous to the user as they are to the opponent. Actually, they're more dangerous to the user than they are to the opponent because you can you can spin those things around, and if your opponent's ten feet away, you're more likely to hit yourself than you are to hit them. So I I still don't believe that flails were ever used in combat. Uh, if they uh, were, so it, it wasn't on a large nunchucks? scale. Bruce Lee used nunchucks. He was a fucking actor. Uh, Michelangelo, the the turtle that 
to turn into a man. <laughs> he's fucking nunchucks. So, <laughs> so you're basically the same shit. Your two examples of, of nunchucks being used in combat are Bruce Lee as an actor and a literal cartoon turtle. Bruce Lee is not an actor. That was, those were documentaries. <laughs> uh, well, maybe biopics. If biopics at most. <laughs> Sigismund not no, giving you, a f- yeah. I don't. I don't. I. I actually. If you actually think about it, the ball and chain, like how could you use that effectively? You know. I uh, honestly, I don't think you can. In my research, I. I Two so I, okay. So I know I'm I'm not the best at researching. I don't care enough to do deep research like you do. But I found two sources that said the the Hussites, or Sate, or however, however the fuck you would say it, the Czechs when they took back the castle, two different sites, both from Wikipedia, <laughs> said that they used these. Like apparently it was like a thing and. They tried to explain like they were farmers and they had they had sickles and fucking other farming tools and they had these because it was some sort of farming tool. Now wait, is like this the ball and chain? Okay, so it was a farming tool that they were adapting. Oh, yeah, so like 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 the kind of thing that they would use for threshing. So that would be instead of being a, a handle with a long chain and a ball on the end, it would be like a staff with a chain and a, a ball on the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because those are the. Uh, this is why you. For, I, I need you to do research on this stuff. Okay. That. All right. I believe that. For sure. Uh, using farming implements in combat, like that, those are some of the most common weapons throughout history. Is stuff that that people could just pick up from from yeah, their the homes. Farmers and like, I'm gonna and, use what I know because I'm trained at using this tool, and I'm gonna instead of cutting some fucking roots or fucking whatever I was doing, I'm going to cut your neck with it. I've been using this to whoop the shit out of defenseless plants so I can definitely use it against a person. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so a flail in that sense, okay, I uh, I could believe that they were using those in combat because they uh, that's keeping the, the business end of the weapon really, really far away from you. And it's a, a double duty type of implement. Like that's a reason that Vikings, yeah. when when the Scandinavians would actually go a Viking and start raiding other uh, other countries and settlements and shit, they wouldn't take swords and shields. They would just have an axe because they already had an axe at home that they're using to chop wood and build houses and stuff. They're it's right. right, uh, right. Uh, so yeah, like <clears throat> another misconception. Well, I, like, I know we've talked like, about this uh, on the show before. Like is that swords feet, weren't used like very often long. either. It's like. It's like a five foot or eight foot, five foot stick with the chain that's like two feet and then the ball at the end. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense to me. That I believe. Uh, the flail in the sense of it just being a handle with a chain and, and a ball on the end, like the, you put that in oh, the like, hands like of the... Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put that in the hands of somebody who's untrained, they're just going to kill themselves with it. So Sigismund, not giving a fuck about his men or anything else in general, just charged in. The Hussites were ready for uh, were ready and baited them closer to the castle walls. Once in range, the Hussite would unleash their artillery. So they had fucking cannons. They had cannons, they had cannons yeah. at this point. Yeah. How the hell do you pull off a siege when cannons are involved? <laughs> well, that's how retarded this fucking Roman emperor was. Hey, you do okay? No, this is the this is the shitty Roman Empire. So okay, you can you can talk trash about him. It, it's not oh, the yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah, the Roman yeah. Empire yeah. back in the good old Here days. Come the I mean excuses. the Western Roman Here come, Empire. Here come the excuses. The Czechs whoop the Romans. Just let it be. Don't don't give excuses. Yeah, how many of them were actually Roman? You know what? I bet that considering the part of the country it, it was in, it was probably like you know a bunch of Germanic people or maybe some French people. They, they weren't they weren't 20, like true knights. Italian Ro- true Italian Romans. Twenty thousand Roman knights. See, the, the real Rome didn't even have knights. They weren't buying into that whole knighting bullshit. This is the the Holy Roman Empire, which to me is not the Roman Empire. <laughs> The fucking posers. It's, they're the Catholic, spoiled, the they're the spoiled children of the Roman Empire. Exactly like this guy who's about to get his ass kicked. 
You know what? I'm I'm glad that he's about to get his ass kicked. This story is about my wife's dad. He was there. <laughs> He aged very well if he was still fertile late enough in life to, to yeah, he's have, like a, have a kid your wife's age. Yeah, he's like 365 years old or, or, or 865 years old. I can't remember. Historically speaking, trying to siege a castle is no joke, and that's very accurate. It not as, it's not as intense as... Generally speaking, it's not as intense as people would imagine, but it's still a big undertaking, but also the best way to, yeah. to handle any sort of fortified location. After several months, Sigismund retreated. The Hussite only lost 30 men, and Sigismund lost over 500? Holy yeah. shit. They Sigismund's whooped, they, a, they a whooped his fucking, fucking punk. ass. Yeah, they whooped his fucking ass. Like, okay, I, I don't want to take away from the Hussites. But yeah, god damn. Yeah, that, we we got to give credit to the Hussites in this situation. They They took out 500 and only lost 30? It did, Over the Hussites, several months, like, literally, like from what I can, uh, from the research I did, which isn't that much, but it, I mean, it was like several days of kind of looking into this and trying to write the story. Hussites literally just is the Czech Republic now, like those people that fought against the Romans and established themselves here, like literally Hussites just means Czech. And I thought that was super cool. Like this movement, these farmers, they were like, fuck these motherfucking Roman motherfuckers won and succeeded and whooped their fucking ass. And those are the Czech people that are alive now. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. They lose. They actually, they, like I said in the beginning, they lose like a hundred years later, Romans come back and whoop their ass. But, uh, they, uh, I think I don't know if I wrote, wrote this in there, but I read this. They they lose like the Romans beat they retake uh, High Castle, but there's a treaty, and the Czechs, even though they like submit to the Romans again, they are allowed to have their own religion. No so, shit. Yeah, they keep their religion, whatever the fuck their religion is. They even though they lose. It would have gone to like it would have been brutal. Some the Thirty Year War, like why it ended was a treaty. Okay, fine, we win. You can believe whatever the fuck you want to believe, but we, as the Romans, uh, own the castle and we we're in charge. But you can believe what you want because you guys are motherfucking crazy, and well, that's how the war stopped. Well, I. I got to I got to give respect to him because months of fighting, losing only 30 men but taking out over 500 of the enemy is goddamn yeah. impressive. And it was a, almost a year. According to legend, according to legend and the notes that I'm reading off of the screen right now, the queen was so satisfied with the Hussite defense of her castle that she spent the next 6 months sleeping with all 20,000 men that defended her and her castle. <laughs> <laughs> and she later died from an infection, and I assume exhaustion as well. <laughs> is that is that historically accurate? Uh, no. <laughs> well, you know what? Regardless, the Czechs won their freedom, at least for the time being. No, but there was there was there was a lot of. Uh... So, that's a joke, but uh, there was a lot of weird information about how much uh, she respected them. So. I assumed that she fucked a lot of them. So. <laughs> you, you do realize that respect and sex are are different things. I I have had no, sex with plenty like, of people like that if, I don't respect. If I was the queen, because the deal they made, like the deal they made was, <clears throat> okay, you have the castle, but I still get to be queen. So this woman who, her the Roman king that died, she took over, the Hussites come in, they're fighting each other. They're fucking shit up. She's like, look, let's make a deal. I get to still be in charge. But you can have the castle and you get to fuck me. That fair was deal. kind of the deal. <laughs> well, fair deal for for the, the Hussite, for everybody. I guess. She gets to be in charge. I don't fuck. know. I, I think that she's... 
she's getting the short end of the stick and the long end of the dick in that equation. I'm pretty sure that she stayed. Uh, she was the ruler until she died or something. I don't remember. Uh, hey, but you... she was badass. I think she was badass too because what she did that no man would ever do was she was willing to accept she fucked twenty thousand men that these men were badass and fucked them all. Yeah. Well, God bless her for doing it. That that is something that I could never pull off, even if I wanted to. What's her well, name? Queen, uh, Queen Sophia. Uh, Sophia. Yeah, that's my girl, dude. Well, at this Respect. point in the episode, I'm going to read to you, the listeners, the people of this world, a legend. <clears throat> a legend of a Czech what? farmer and his horse. I'm hoping it's a love story. A legend told for a thousand years, and I shall tell you of this legend, for it happened at High Castle, and it's been told again and again and again. A legend at the same castle? I love you all, and that is why I tell you of this legend. You were in a bit of a mood when you were writing that part, weren't you? Must have been hammered. (laughs) But to begin with, what is a legend? Let's explore that. A legend is a genre of folklore that consists of a narrative featuring human actions believed or perceived, both by the teller and the listeners, to have taken place in human history. Narratives in this genre may demonstrate human values and possess certain qualities that give the tale of verisimilitude. That's a big word, Joel. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Legend, for its active and passive participants, may include miracles, and legends may be transferred over time to keep them fresh and vital. You always got to keep your les- your your legends like fresh, you know, spice fresh things up every now and then. Just switch it up a little bit, keep the excitement, keep the romance. That's that's the way yeah, that you exactly. you keep a legend going. Many legends operate within the realm of uncertainty, never being entirely believed by the participants, but also never being resolutely doubted. Legends are sometimes distinguished from myths in that they concern human beings as the main characters rather than gods, and sometimes in that they have the same sort of historical basis, whereas myths generally do not. The Brothers Grimm defined legend as folktale historically grounded. A byproduct of the concern with human beings is the long list of legendary creatures, leaving no resolute doubt that legends are historically grounded. How so do now, you know this? This is... The, uh, I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head i memorized the wikipedia entry for for legend a while ago i think i was trying to impress a girl and it obviously didn't work <clears throat> yeah because so you, now that, that's the name of your penis right Coop? <laughs> what it. legend legend yeah oh my god dude that is the sweetest name for a dick <laughs> legend Ooh, that's good well this legend isn't about my penis hammer. It's about Horamir and his horse Semek. A long yeah. time ago, when the Czech lands were ruled by an evil prince, Chris Chris Missile, Chris 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 Missile. I'm just going to call him Chris Missile. <laughs> there was a young farmer named Horamir who lived in a small village outside of Vicherad, Vicherad, High Castle. Vicherad. He was a hard High worker Castle. and nurtured the land and the animals of his farm. Horamir had a beautiful white horse named Semek. He raised this horse since it was born, and it grew Semic's to be my very dog, intelligent dude. and my very fucking well trained. Boy. Rumors in the village said that Horamir and Simic could talk to each other. I bet they did more than that. The entire like village were and, farmers. Like you and uh, Argus. And they were the best. What I, what I do with my dog is my own goddamn business, and there's no laws against it, at least not in the state of Texas, so I would appreciate it if you just mind your own fucking business. Argus right? is a god name. The entire village were farmers, and they were the (laughs) making a lot of videos. What? Their crops provided. I didn't. uh, I said the entire village were farmers, and they were the best. Their crops provided sustenance for all in the Czech lands, but the prince had other plans. (gasps) The prince was obsessed with iron and treasure, and opened up mines across the land. The prince encouraged the farmers to give up farming and work in the mines. Eventually, what? completely consumed by greed, there were no more farmers. Sounds like what? What? Sounds like what Mao Zedong did. Or no, it was kind of, kind of the opposite. He turned everybody into farmers. Wait, who's Mao Zedong? and his horse were the only ones who refused to work in the mines. Good for them. 
That's my boy. Vormir dude. rode his my horse through the Vormir, villages, dude. pleading with the people to stop working in the mines and that neglecting their farms would result in famine. Although some cool. people listened to Horamir, most of the miners did not like Horamir for protesting against them and the evil prince. So one day cool. they set think, Horamir's cool. home on fire. Huh. Do you think that Horamir kind of like in your mind, he kind of like in your head if you close your eyes? I picture Sean Bean. And you're thinking about... <gasps> Holy shit, I was going to say that! Right? It's Sean Bean yeah, for I was sure. Say, like, ah, Horamir. fuck, that means yeah. he's going to die though. Yeah. Well, I I don't know that he's going to die yet because I haven't read the rest of this. You were picturing Sean Bean for real? Yeah. And I can tell you exactly why. It, it's because Horamir rhymes, rhymes with Boromir, and Boromir is the character that he played in Lord of the Rings. Fuck yeah. And he, and It just makes sense, but you know? Horamir has a fucking cool horse, like the horse that, that Gandalf has. That's the horse that it is in my head. It's it's Boromir riding Gandalf's white horse. <laughs> So that's what everybody should be picturing at home right now. What was the horse name? Right Artex? Uh, Simic. S-E-M-I-K. Oh, Simic. Not Artex. Artex is from uh, Never, Never Ending, Ending Story, Story. Which is yeah, also it's a, a legend. Horse. So Horamir ain't no bitch. And after they burned that's down right. his house, he returned the favor. Once all the vill- villagers left to mine in the mines, he burned down all of their fucking houses. <laughs> God yeah, fuck damn. yeah, he did. But Horamir, the prince was furious or, or and punished Bean, Horamir by sentencing him to death. I, I knew it. You cannot have a Sean Bean character that lives. <laughs> when Horamir was asked his last wish, he requested one last ride around the castle grounds on his beloved horse, Simic. His yeah. wish was granted. When Horamir climbed onto his white horse, he whispered something into his ear. Sort of like the end of Lost in Translation. We're never going to know what he whispered to the horse. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! It's exactly like that. Okay, now I'm picturing exactly something completely different. I'm picturing Bill Murray riding Scarlett Johansson. When Horamir was she's a white horse, but she's a white. Well, <laughs> take the S off the end, and you're right. It's a horse with her face on it. <laughs> Ew, that's disgusting. That, hey. Oh my God! Oh come on, tell, are, it, just, are it, fucked. Yeah, tell me you would. Tell me you would turn that down with a straight face. I wouldn't t- turn down either one. I would fuck Simic as a white horse. I would fuck <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, and I would fuck Bill Murray. None of that matters to me. I I'd bang Scarlett Johansson if she had Bill Murray's body. Man, I'm I'm open to everything. <laughs> so Horamir's yeah, wish was granted. When Horamir climbed onto his white horse, he whispered something in his ear. Suddenly, Simic ran for the castle walls, jumped over and slid down the, cl- the cliff to the river below. Onlookers were shocked at the sight. No horse could jump so high. When looking over ten, the edge... They're 10 feet tall. They or more. 10 feet over the wall? God damn. Uh, they'd probably... Met- but they are angled. Like, castle walls back in the day, like, they're, you know, the base was, was, uh, was wider, and then the top is... It's almost not like a, a isometric triangle, but kind of like a spear shape or a uh, arrowhead, you know, like the castle walls are thicker at the base. Well, and I mean, at the top. also back in, back in those days, they weren't using proper units of measurement. Like we use nowadays in America, not talking about that metric <laughs> bullshit. So they're probably like, they, they call it 10 feet, but it's probably like 10 hogsheads to a bushel or some shit like no, that. I so, I mean, who knows? It might, might be like two feet huge. tall. The wall, the wall is like two of me tall or more. Like there's no, I couldn't climb it. Oh, God damn. All right. All right. Well, shit, they might be right. So when looking over the edge, they were astonished by the fact that they survived the fall and were already on the other side of the Vlatava River. Yeah. They were on the other side of the river, Simic in a full gallop. The miraculous jump and swim exhausted Simic, and he had received fatal wounds from the slide down the cliff. Simic spoke in a human voice to Horamir one last time before dying and asked for a tomb to be built for him. Horamir <laughs> did as the horse wished. Fuck but yeah. one day, the tomb vanished, floating into the sky. But Simic is said to be sleeping on Vitur- in the Vicharad Rock, ready to come back whenever his help is needed again. So this horse is just, this horse is like, like the sword and the, the stone. The horse is super fucking Superman, dude. 
Or like the sword in the stone. Yeah, I see that too. But dude, like uh, if you look up the legend and like try to read the multiple versions of it, like there are, uh, you know, it's all, it's a legend. So nothing is factual, but there are like different accounts of seeing the tomb actually uh, come out of the ground and fly into the sky. Like a UFO, like a fucking alien or something. What the fuck? Yeah, like multiple ones when I was research. So I did, I was obsessed about the castle. I found out about this legend and I did more research on the legend than any of the other things. (laughs) And like literally, I think that this legend at its core was uh, an alien. You think it's an ancient alien situation? Well, I don't know if it's ancient. Well, it's 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 a medieval alien at least. <clears throat> but I think the horse was like how they said they could talk and stuff and multiple people saying like it was different. This is like a weird connection. I think the horse wasn't really a horse or it was an alien as a horse. And then it helped this guy cuz this guy helped the the alien. The alien was like build me a, a I need you to build this for me because if you build it this way, my, uh, the mothership can find me. And so this guy built this fucking weird tomb in the way, whatever the fuck the horse told him. And literally like it got ripped out of the ground and sent into space and got, you know, taken away. <clears throat> so essentially That's what I think an alien horse teamed Semic up is an alien. with, with Sean Bean from the 1400s and they yeah. reenacted the plot of E.T. with Lord of the Rings battles thrown into the middle of it. They invented E.T. E.T. was based off of this legend. I love this fucking story. <laughs> Where are the movies about this? Yeah, what the fuck? It's called, uh, what's War Horse? Uh, no, that movie sucks. Oh, that that one was just fucking depressing. Yeah, yeah. That's no, that's cool. exactly like, what uh, I would, what I want to do when I go see a movie is just sit in a theater and fucking cry. You know, we have our like Paul Bunyan and our like American uh, legends. Paul Bunyan, uh, what's another one? Uh, Davy Crockett, like these stories. This one of. Boromir and Semek is is like that version for <laughs> Boromir and uh, ET. <laughs> yeah, but that's like like actually that's like their version of the same shit that we have. And what was so cool is I was writing this episode about the castle and and uh, Kaveta was like, Joel, do you know about the legend of something that happened at the castle? You're trying to do a show about. And the like the way she said it is the same way like if you were to tell her, don't you know Paul Bunyan? It's that you know. It's, it's like that that's the there. the scale that it's on over there. Yes, she like she said it to me like, well, you know about about Paul Bunyan, right? And I was like, no, who the fuck's Paul Bunyan? And she was like, oh my god! And she sent me like three links, and there's like the story of Horamir and Semek is like. If you you could type in Horomir and it'll auto Google the rest of it. It's a real legend in that country, the same as Paul Bunyan. <clears throat> it's their Paul Bunyan, and it's 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 fucking sweet. Like it's a cool story. It's about what it really is about is uh, farming is taking care of yourself and your family. The mines are greed, wanting money. And Horomir and Semek are like, fuck that. Oh, wait, and shit. They, this is some allegory that I'm supposed to learn a lesson from? <laughs> yes. Fuck. <laughs> that's what legends are for. That's what that's what fairy tales are. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, but Horomir, Horomir and Boromir and fucking <laughs> the alien horse, they were just trying to teach us a lesson. Well, what sometimes what, uh, sometimes what lessons what did you, you learn today? What Horomir's trying to tell us is sometimes all you need to do is take care of yourself and your family. 
You don't need to go for the riches and the gold and the and the and the fancy fucking bullshit because it, in the end, it's evil. At the end of the day, what really matters is is your relationship with your horse. Yeah, with your alien horse that can talk to you, and apparently can fly into space later. Well, you know what? That's that's a message that I can get behind. <laughs> I have, a, I have a newfound respect for for horses and for Sean Bean. He died. Well, oh, he lived. The horse died. Holy shit. This Whoa. is the only time that Sean Bean's ever survived a story. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's equally as amazing as the actual content of the story. It's the fact that Sean Bean survived to the end of it. Yep. Do you think this was dumb? So I'm going to bring out my insecurities once again. Do you think this was a really fucking shitty episode? Do you think this was like a, like our, like right now in the chat, Ruben's making fun of me, fright, frightening me is making fun of me. Well, let's Ghost be honest. Uh, fun of me. Frightening me is probably correcting all of the, the inaccuracies in our statements because he's really, really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> True. I kind of, I kind of treat the. Joel, the, it's not a legend; it's a myth. It's not the a Monday legend, night myth, premieres Joel. have turned into a learning opportunity for me because I know that anything that we say that that isn't right, frightening me is going to be Frights right there to fucking... to make sure that we know what the actual information is, which <clears throat> I appreciate. Spoilers. I don't appreciate the spoilers. Everybody knows how I feel about spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. I bet you at the premiere on Monday, at, in the first, the second you mention horror mirror, he'll be like. Oh, he jumps off a cliff and kills himself <laughs> like right there in the chat. Just ruin the whole story. Uh, it turns right. out Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Yeah, his tomb flies into space. He, he already knows. He already knows the whole story. <laughs> well, regardless, we we love all of you crazy people that tune in every single week to listen to us go through this this shit show that we call our lives uh, and, and we enjoy it. Like we, we love hanging out with everybody. We love making the show. We're going to continue doing it for as long as we possibly can until our bodies give out, which considering, Dude, considering how healthy we both are, that hard. might not be all that long, but it's going to be fun. I'm so fucked up on, dr I'm drunk and on cocaine right now. It's, it's fucked. I'm here for a good time. Not a long time. Exactly. That being said, that's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in once again to the Iconoblast podcast. You can follow us on Instagram uh, at Iconoblast podcast. You can follow me at Coop Newcomb. You can follow Joel at Joel R. Benner. As we mentioned earlier, we do Monday night premieres on YouTube. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, go to the Iconoblast YouTube channel, Iconoblast podcast yeah. YouTube channel, and join us in the live chat. Joel and I are in there every week. We answer questions we make dick and fart jokes we, it's pretty much yeah. like an extension of the podcast itself and you get to interact with all yeah, the other the listeners podcast. which is a, a shitload of fun better. a lot of a lot of good people in the yeah. in the iconoblast family uh, also don't forget to go to shop.drinkingbros.com and just buy all the merch buy multiple yeah multiple copies of every engine, single piece of merch iconoblast and all our shit shows up get the coffee cups get the t-shirts Get get the Iconoblast butt plugs, the Iconoblast flame While throwers. While you're doing it, finger blast yourself. Oh, and the uh, the Iconoblast pocket pussies should be done soon. I'm I'm vigorously quality testing them. Every single one, every single Iconoblast pocket pussy that gets shipped to you has been personally tested by me, so I can guarantee they all get the job done. Vigorously, Just yeah. Rinse them out before you use them, though, because I do not have enough time to handle that part of it. You, you guys, no, no, no. They're all they're all used. That's the point. I mean, you might as well consider that like an extra little bonus. You, not only do you get an yeah. Iconoblast brand pocket you don't pussy, want, like, you also raw brand new rubber fucking pussy. You want you, you get a little you piece with, with you get a little piece of me shot. as well. <laughs> oh I, I I put a piece of me in every single one of those. <laughs> That's disgusting. All right, well, Joel, you got you got any closing statements before we wrap this up? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to let down Ruben. So, hey, Ruben, go fuck yourself. Fuck me. There's never been an episode where I didn't do the honor voice, so it's not gonna happen today. Got to make sure that's in there for fuck Ruben. Me. 
All right, we love you all, and we will see you all next week. Until then, my name has been Matt Cooper. And that's Joel Benner, and we're reminding you to never take anything at face value.